32 degrees, 12 minutes, 49 seconds, north latitude. 92 degrees, 39 minutes, 45 seconds, west longitude. That's where we are right now, downtown Elbury. It's our location in terms of coordinates, particularly in terms of latitude and longitude. Now, location, direction, distance. These are all ways of assessing space around us. Or with geography, it's about defining the space around us in terms of what's there or what's not there, who's there, who's not there, how much or how little of what. Just looking at all, the, all of its uh, characteristics and traits, but also in terms of relation of where it is to somewhere else or a precise system of where it is, all its different dimensions, characteristics, and location. Now, a space changes over time, sometimes very quickly, sometimes very slow, but it's always changing. But its location is always the same. 50 million years ago, when this was ocean, it was a very different place. But the coordinates, 33 degrees north latitude, 92 degrees north longitude, are still the same. Now it's a heavily forested area, miles from the ocean, hundreds of miles from the ocean, but the coordinates are still the same. Now, location is often described in terms of coordinate systems, sometimes a mathematical system, sometimes you have these grid systems like in a maps, like say A1, B2, C3, F5, or F1 ways of identifying where something might be on a map. You should see that with the local street maps. But more precise systems with latitude and longitude, especially when looking over a larger, larger area. This is, now, latitude and longitude are the most common ways of identifying location. At least particularly in terms of what they call absolute location. is the identification of a place by a precise and accurate system of coordinates. Identification. System of precise coordinates. Size coordinates. Now, like I said, usually defined by latitude and longitude. Sometimes they have points in a grid like system, townships, range sections, so forth, but uh, again, for larger areas, latitude and longitude are the standard. It's all based on geometric idea that a circle is defined as 360 degrees. It will, of course, be 90 degrees. That latitude, so let's see it here on this big map here lines crisscrossing back and forth. Latitude for the lines running east to west. Um, is defined in terms of north and south though. So latitude runs east-west. Sometimes they're called parallels. They run from zero degrees um, up to 90 degrees north latitude or from zero degrees down to 90 degrees south longitude. Again, running east-west. Zero degrees, of course, that is the equator, exact center of the Earth. 
and running up to 90 degrees north, which is the North Pole. 90 degrees south being the South Pole. Now remember, 180 degrees, but you run from the equator up to the North Pole, 90 degrees, run back down the other side of the North Pole, down to uh, the, back to the equator, that's 180 degrees, then back to the, the equator down the South Pole, 270 degrees, then back up to the equator, 360 degrees. At longitude, these are the lines that run north-south. Lines that run north-south, they're expressed in terms of east and west. Zero degrees to 180 degrees east or zero degrees to 180 degrees west. Now, these are also called uh, meridians. Zero degrees is generally called the prime meridian. Sometimes also called the Greenwich meridian. Because when they're set, setting up the system of latitude and longitude uh, in the 1800s, uh, they needed a starting point to define, the, to define this. The well, debate uh, came down to Paris and the Royal Observatory at Greenwich, England, they decided not to make the prime meridian a, a go through a national capital, so Greenwich being just outside of London, Greenwich holds out. Basically, all these lines here, it's how many degrees west or east of, a, of, a, of a, the Greenwich Meridian we are. So we're about a quarter of the way on the uh, west of, a quarter way around the world west of a, the Greenwich Meridian. Now, of course, they go all the way around the world, 180 degrees in both directions, adding up to that 360 degrees. Where they meet on the other side of the world, so it doesn't really have a special name, but it does have it doesn't make a basis of a special designation. Like this rush roughly uh, here in Siberia, near Alaska, running mostly through the Pacific Ocean. It's equivalent to the international date line. But The international date line zigzags around land masses, particularly, uh, so make sure they're not running through countries or islands, make sure they're not splitting anybody up between the days. But roughly runs along 180 degrees east or 180 degrees west, um, west meridian. Now think about these uh, lines of longitude running north and south is, they always meet at the poles. They're all the same length, but they all meet at the poles. So you're at the North Pole here, 90 degrees north latitude. Well, there's nowhere else you can go for the north. You're at the North Pole, everywhere you face is south. You're at the same length the South Pole, everywhere you face is north. But also at that point, all the lines of meridian are converging right at that point. So, lines of longitude, all the same. But because the Earth is round, they bulge out and get further away from each other as they move closer to the equator. Then as they start moving back to the pole again, they start moving closer and closer together until they finally all intersect. Now, latitude's a little different. 
the lines are of different lengths. As you get closer and closer to the poles, they get the lines get shorter and shorter to finally get to the 90 degrees north or south, where it's just a single point. But they're longer and longer to finally get to the equator. Now, from that point, even though they're different lengths, um, they're all the same distance away from each other. At one degree of latitude, it's roughly equivalent to about uh, 69 miles of distance from uh, the next degree, north or south. And that's equal to 111 kilometers. So you can do the math, 69 times 33, see how, how far north we are. North of the equator, anyway. Now you can enter these coordinates in pretty much on a, many computer programs. They'll give you a precise set of coordinates, precise location anywhere in the in the world. Except even little towns like El Dorado, Arkansas, have uh, their own unit of latitude and longitude because we. Uh, no matter how many people are here, how few people are here, we are a specific place, specific point on the planet. I talk about absolute location, there's also the idea of relative location. Relative location. Now this is a real location in relation to this or other things. Now with this, I've got a very precise set of coordinates. It's not dependent on anything else except our great use of latitude and longitude. But Relative location, something like say 10 minutes from Walmart or two hours south of Little Rock. That's relative location related to something else. Uh, we are 15 minutes north of the state line of Louisiana. We're 90 miles uh, east of the state line of Texas and Texarkana. That's relative location. Again, how we define locations are different ways to do that. The idea of site. It's a concept in absolute location. First, the physical and cultural characteristics and attributes of a particular a place. More than just its mathematical location. Yeah, as I can use these coordinates to say exactly where we are on the planet, but site tells us what's there. In this case, the downtown courthouse. Find the physical characteristics of a location. So I'll give you an example of the equator and uh, 180 degrees uh, east longitude. What am I describing there? What's the site look? What's the site characteristics? Empty ocean. Site. Situation. Different. At situated. The external relationship of the locale, particular reference to items of significance of the place. Particular reference to uh, items of significance. Now, describe these coordinates. Okay, the courthouse. Uh, 
big granite building, uh, government center, but also situation is we're in the middle of a forest. Uh, we're also in the middle of a big oil field, uh, several miles beneath our feet. But again, particular reference to items of significance to the place. And what is significant about it? What is it? What is, what, how is it used? What is actually there? Now, direction and distance. Now, of course, we all know the uh, general uh, idea of direction, of absolute direction, in terms of a cardinal system of cardinal directions, north, south, east, west. Now, north, south, east, west, you can subdivide that even further. Northeast, uh, southeast, southwest, northwest, and even further than that, northwest or west, northwest. West, southwest, south, southwest, south, southeast, east, southeast, east, northeast, and north, north, uh, north, northeast. Now, during when it's right on the money to call it due north or due south, uh, they start getting more specific. Um, south, southwest, southwest, even they go into the south by southwest or south by uh, and so forth. But generally, the four cardinal directions north, south, east, west. But again, that comes from absolute direction. Now, absolutes, for example, the sun always rises in the east. It always sets in the west. Always. Absolute direction. But absolute direction also comes down to relative direction. Relative. Or also called relational direction. Direction compared to where we are. Now, compared to where we are, um, for example, you've got the Mid East or the Far East. That's east of us. Um, again, compared to where we are. But again, you're in uh, China, the Middle East is east of you, it's west of you. Um, you know, I'd say if we think of the west, we think of areas generally west of the Mississippi River. Um, but you could be, say, New Mexico, referring to areas like Texas and Oklahoma, it's still what we consider the west, but it's uh, east of where they are. Again, just direction compared to where you are. The way I think of it is we're in, as part of Arkansas, we're in the south. Again, there are a lot of places much further south than us, but in terms of where the rest of the country is, the rest of the country is this area is considered the south. So relative, relative to where you are, and relative to where other people think you are. And they sometimes ask where you're from, and they say the South, or uh, certain California, Nevada, say I'm from the uh, out west. 
when people say in Illinois or Indiana, they're from the Midwest. Again, just relative to where they are compared to other people in the country. <clears throat> relative direction versus cardinal absolute direction. I'm going to talk about distance. Now, we've got absolute distance and relative distance. Relative distance. Absolute distance being space, space separated by two specific points on the Earth's surface. using a specific standard of measurement. This is between two points using a specific measurement. Usually it's miles or kilometers. Again, what's a mile? A mile is 5,280 feet. Except most of the rest of the world uses the metric system. We're still on the uh, old conventional system of uh, miles and uh, feet and so forth. But a kilometer it is 0 0.62 miles. Or that is also equal to 3,280 feet. You see that scale sometimes converted on your, um, on your dashboard, on your uh, speedometer, miles per hour versus kilometers per hour. But a kilometer, it also equals 1,000 meters, and a meter is 39.37 inches. And metric to standard, uh, conventional. Now, a mile can also be termed in terms of yards, it's also 1,760 yards. Okay, now we've beaten that point to death. In terms of absolute uh, distance. Absolute distance, we are 15 miles from Louisiana state lines. That is an absolute distance. Two points, Louisiana State Line and El Dorado, using specific measurements. We are 125 miles from Little Rock. Absolute distance. We're 90 miles east of uh, Texarkana. And the way of using it is isn't necessarily even two points on Earth. Just any two points, the distance to use measurements. The planet Earth is 93 million miles from the sun. That is an absolute distance. Or it does shift a little bit, but still is the point. Distance between two, two points using specific measurements. We're getting the units of light years and parsecs, but that's uh, going a little far. But relative distance, it's the same thing, but you're not necessarily using the same units. Different units, not to units of measurement, distance. Distance using different uh, units. Time, or money, or something like that. Um, Say you're five minutes away from somewhere, you're 10 minutes from Walmart. That's a relative distance. It could take 20 minutes with traffic or if there's an accident or something. Um, you may have heard the term as the crow flies. That's a unit of relative distance. Um, um, 
terms of money. For example, the federal government reimburses people at about 56, per, 56 cents per mile when they have to travel. Uh, you can say something is $5.60 away using a, the idea of relative distance. Say Little Rock's not 125 miles away, it's about two hours away. That's relative distance. And of course, scale. The degree of generalization represented. That's how do you get scale here? And how much does this represent the world? Now, of course, if you have a one-to-one -one map here, it'd be the entire world, but you can't fit the entire world right into this classroom right now. But instead, we scale it down to something that's a readable map. But of course, the problem with scale is to scale it down sometimes, you have to leave out a lot of details. This map here has only a handful of the major cities. It doesn't have El Dorado or Little Rock uh, listed. Uh, it doesn't have enough... Uh, uh, it's too much uh, information, too much uh, scale. Be look too busy to try to include all the states. Uh, but uh, roughly on uh, this map, one inch represents twelve hundred miles. That's a scale. Sometimes we have uh, maps that are much bigger areas may have one inch equals one mile, or one inch equals five miles, or something like that. Again, much more detailed, localized maps, particularly like street maps. For this big one here, one inch for 1,200 miles scale. So that's how we use a lot of these coordinate systems and directions. Now, geography, like any other discipline, has its own vocabulary. These are some of the most important ideas. And, uh, direction, distance, location, but also in terms of absolute and relative direction, absolute and relative distance, uh, absolute and relative location. With absolute, you use more specific uh, systems like latitude and longitude. Absolute distance, you use specific measurements of distance. Absolute direction, uh, specific directions, the cardinal directions, north, south, east, west, even if you subdivide it, um, or whether or not, or if you don't. Um, also, the idea of the site, the characteristics of the location, the situation, the relationships of the locale, the scale, the degree of generalization. Again, these are just a few of the tools we use in geography, use um, all the time. But these are also used in a lot of other disciplines as well. It. Geography is a good crossroads of a lot of other disciplines, specifically how the world is used and how it's uh, viewed and how information is gathered. So that's it.